Every day, belly rubs. That's all he wants. That's all he wants in life. He's a simple. He's a simple guy with simple needs. I'm gonna need my full concentration today, so I'm gonna need you to go with your dad. Can you go with your dad? What if I give you a treat? Would you go with your dad if I give you a treat? Yeah, okay. A little bit of an intro today. If you hate intros, here's your timestamp. Um, save yourself the comment about how you hate my long intros, but I got some stuff that I gotta say. So as some of you guys know, I had dental surgery done not too long ago. It has been exactly a week and two days. The surgery itself went really well. Um, healing though was not great. I ended up getting an infection. I thought it was dry socket. Thank goodness it wasn't dry socket, but I do have an infection right now and it's bad and it's so painful. So I'm on a lot of pain meds, I'm on a lot of antibiotics, and it's just not been a great time. I am immunocompromised, so anytime my body is like fighting off something, it just goes into like this weird kind of crazy self-defense mode where everything hurts to the touch, like even having clothes on hurts. So I'm wearing as little clothing as possible, but like my skin hurts to the touch, um, taking a shower hurts, and this basically happens anytime I get sick. So I knew that I was getting an infection the second that my skin started hurting. And uh, sure enough, went to the dentist and was like, yeah, it looks pretty nasty in there. And it's just been horrible. The pain has been horrible. The side effects of the antibiotics and the pain meds have been horrible. My poor liver is probably screaming. I feel like this week has been worse than when I had the C word, not chlamydia, this. And um, I don't even know, why do people not say it? I wonder if they like heavily censor it, if it like catches that you say. Anyway, the C word, the C word that's not chlamydia. It was worse, way worse than, than that. So it's been a week. I've literally been in bed for, I was in bed for six days straight, like could not do anything for six days because I was just sleeping through the pain and um, it was awful. But I did manage to get through two seasons of Indian matchmaking and it's been, <laughs> it's been a journey. So anyway, um, I am here. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try and film this video. Yesterday I had a psych appointment and that lasted about an hour and 15 minutes and by the time my appointment was done, my mouth was in so much pain. So we're gonna see how much I get through today. Um, I did pop some pain meds before this video to hopefully subdue or keep at bay any pain that might come from talking so much. But with all that said, I am back. I thought about doing this series on my channel. If it performs well, we'll see what the response is once this goes up. But there's, a, if you're familiar with the Reddit universe, um, there's something called AITA, which stands for Am I the A-hole? And people basically share stories about things that are going on in their life. And they ask if you think that they are the A-hole in the situation or if the other party is, or if both of them are. And you can vote, you can chime in, and it's really fun. My husband kind of reads these little stories to me often, um, but I thought it would be interesting to see if there were like any plant stories, uh, any AITA plant stories, and sure enough there were. There's not a ton out there, but there's a few. And so I have compiled some of them to read to you today, and we're gonna discuss it, and I'm gonna tell you my thoughts on it, and yeah, it's basically just something to talk about while we do some repotting, which brings me to my next thing. Um, as usual, I'm gonna show you guys the roster before we start so that I don't have to like interrupt anything and you guys know all the plant names and we can get that out of the way. So the first one is this very, very um, pathetic looking Alocasia Mello. I had this in the same nursery soil, nursery pot, for way too long. It was probably in that same four inch pot for like, I wanna say two years, or maybe even more than that. And it was 
like totally hydrophobic, just uh, the soil was awful, but it was growing, it was alive, it wasn't thriving, but it was alive. So of course, um, I went to repot it and all of the roots rotted. So uh, I did transfer it to pond the first time. So I think I'm gonna try soil this time. I'm not 100% sure, but um, I don't really have a lot of faith in today's repot, honestly. I kind of feel like it's gonna rot again, but we're gonna try because the roots are long now, a lot longer than I wanted it to be. I can see a few um, like potential corms wanting to start, but I don't know. We're gonna keep our, our fingers crossed for that one. The next one is this very, very sad and pathetic looking. I'm gonna break this off now since it's nice and yellow. This is the Anthurium Queen of Hearts that I acquired from Amanda. Um, this one has kind of just always struggled a little bit. I had a hard time rooting it. The new leaf, the first new leaf that came out on it um, rotted, or not rotted, it just like opened halfway, like it unfurled halfway, and then one half of the leaf died. And I think it's just like from stress of being, I don't know, like chopped first of all, and shift, sorry, I'm, I haven't really talked a lot in the last week and my voice is just kind of cutting in and out. And I do have to speak a little bit more soft because I can't open my jaw all the way. Anyway, so this one just, you know, kind of went through it. It was chopped from her plant and it was shipped. And then it was sitting in a box for like a week when I was at my mom's house and then it was shipped and then it traveled again to California. And throughout that whole process, that new growth point had been growing and growing. And so I kind of already knew that it wasn't gonna make it, but um, a new leaf has come out and it's so teeny and small. I'm just happy it's alive, honestly, but I don't really know what's going on under here. I'm not seeing a ton of roots, which I feel like I should see roots at this point. This one is not, I mean, I am going to repot it, but I kind of just want to get it into something with no drainage holes, something a little smaller. And um, I, I don't know, we just got to do something because it's not really doing much in this, in this setup as it is. Next one is this um, Hoya Polynura, and this one has grown quite a bit in my care. Um, I really wasn't expecting a ton of growth on this right away, but it has like pushed out a lot more from these two strands. You can see some brand new leaves, and then it's also pushing some new um, growth from down at the base. I don't know what the tea is with um, repotting Hoyas when they have new leaves on the way, Part of me is thinking I should probably wait until these new leaves finish hardening off, but honestly, this one hasn't really stopped growing and it dries out so fast in this in this pot with drainage, even though like the pond is like super dense, there's like no perlite at all. Um, so we're just gonna risk it. I'm just gonna also, trans I'm gonna put this one into pond, but I just wanted to kind of get it out of here because I could see roots coming out of the bottom and I just kind of want to save as many of those roots as possible because I know they're going to break. But yeah, this one is going to be repotted today as well. Um, we're not doing anything with this Milano Chrysum today. I'm just seeing if um, someone wants to take this one off of my hands. Um, but I really am wanting to handle this uh, situation today. So this is my Homolomina Humulus Red Velvet. And some of you guys know that this was my first project of the year. I was um, attempting to grow it hydroponically. It worked. I didn't end up liking it though because of how dirty it gets and it just looks nasty. So I'm going to get this one out of here and just get it into a regular, I don't know, I think I'm going to do soil. I, I might need to like cloche it for a few days just to kind of like readapt it to not being in water, but am I expecting <laughs> that one to crash and burn? Kind of, um, but I hope it doesn't. There's a dead fungus net on this leaf. I have a real, a real bad fungus net problem right now. It's actually pretty infuriating. So um, anyway, this is another Amanda plant. I think this is a crystal mag. It doesn't look 100% like a crystal mag because there's a slight bit of red in the venation, but um, it's just a really pretty crystal mag, I guess. 
and this one's in tree fern fiber i know that the roots have rotted because there used to be roots that came out of the bottom of here and now there are no more roots <laughs> so i just need to like get this into something clear so that i can keep an eye on it but i'm probably going to keep it in tree fern fiber to continue to grow it um but yeah this one's more of like a a rescue mission so this is the philodendron bicolor mini purple that i got from um tropicals plants in my last import and this one i was just trying to root which it has rooted now and i do have roots along the stem as well which is good because i did want to try and get this on a pole i don't know if this sizes up because there's not a ton of information about it online i don't really see that many photos this is a terrarium plant i believe but i don't have a terrarium to grow it in i don't know if this plant sizes up i mean if it's able if it does get any larger than this which i'm sure it does um and it's nothing like mind-blowing or stunning i might try and get it into some sort of terrarium situation just to like grow it or i might just give it away to someone who actually has a terrarium but i just wanted to just see and um try and get it on a pole and size it up um just to see what it could potentially look like but we gotta get it out of here because it's been in here it's been in here for way too long second to last one is my dicaria madagariensis this one's actually doing really well besides the fact that it perpetually has spider mites which is like kind of weird it's like there's really not much for the spider mites to feast on, but they love this plant. So I am going to unearth it. And I actually might do like a full soak because I can see a bunch of webbing on here. And um, I think I just need to like fully submerge it once and for all and get it out of this soil that it's in. But yeah, it's growing really well. Like you can see how much longer it's gotten. It was definitely not this long when I acquired it. It was kind of like barely coming out of this pot. So um, she's just kind of gone crazy and she's growing so many new growth points. Oh, I have heartburn. Um, people have asked me to do like a dedicated care video on this and I think I will. I just, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's just been a really easy plant for me. It's not like my dedicated Mikan's video where I did have like a lot to to say about it and um, I had a lot, I felt like I had a lot to contribute in terms of like how to grow it really nice and full and lush. But this one, I, I don't have much to say besides give it like a sandy mix and give it light and water. The end. <laughs> Last but not least, why didn't I take this off? Last but not least is one of my philodendron summer glories. If you have never seen this plant before, this is a cross of a philodendron gloriosum and a Macaulay Spinelli hybrid. And it has easily become one of my favorite plants in my collection. This is the newest leaf on it. And it's definitely gaining some size. So this one is just in a little Tupperware. Um, I do think if I'm able today, I'm gonna chop it, but I should probably message my friend first before I chop. Let me just message her now. Whoa. And the reason that I wanna um, chop it is because I got my first, not this one, but I got my, sum, my smaller, sum, I got my smaller summer glory from her. Um, it was the first summer glory I ever owned and it was a wishlist plant and she um, let me buy it at a really, really good price and because she could have gotten more for it, I feel. And hers recently passed away when she went on vacation and so I told her that I wanted to chop mine for her if she didn't replace hers. Um, so I, I just want to message her really quick and ask her if she still needs one. So anyway, um, yeah, this one just kind of like needs somewhere to go because it's now i don't know it's kind of getting closer to the edge it probably could grow one more leaf before it actually hits the edge but i don't want to wait till that point i think this is a climber is it macaulay's finale is a climber gloriosum is a crawler i feel like all the large um summer glories i've seen are climbing have you guys seen the variegated 
Summer Glory. It is stunning. I'll put it in here. It's so, so pretty. I would love to have one, but at this point, they're just kind of like sports, I think. I can't really, I think they're climbing. Like they're sort of like self-heading. Mine was kind mine is kind of crawling, but I can kind of see how the new growth looks like it could start um, self-heading or growing more vertical. Although I see some people with more mature plants that have it in rectangular planters and they are definitely crawling. Anyway, um, I think I'll have time to start one repot before my husband has to jump on a meeting and I have to be quiet. So we're going to move um, into the kitchen dining area. I was going to repot in my plant room, but honestly, it's really, really hot today. And even with the AC on, our top floor does not get cooled down really at all. So I'm here and um, yeah, we're just going to get started. So one really awful thing about having an infection in your mouth is that everything tastes like garbage like this it's i thought i had the c word again not chlamydia i thought i had the c word because um i couldn't really taste anything like my sense of taste was just like shot it was gone the only thing i could taste was just this constant just gross like one of the worst tasting things i've ever tasted in my life and my mouth tasted like that for six days straight and it still kind of tastes like that it's just now my sense of taste is just lessened and that gross taste is also lessened but it's still there but anytime i drink anything or eat anything there's this just sort of like hint of just nasty taste and it's it's very heartbreaking because i eat for pleasure not for survival so eating is just not very fun lately anyway i'm gonna start with this hoya polyneura because that is what my heart is saying and it is one of the only ones that i'm gonna get into pawn i think maybe i'm just hoping sherman don't break this new growth you have one job today one job so you can see all of these roots are coming out. I'm over it, I'm tired of it, and I wanna get them out. So um, we're gonna start with the first AITA. And oh, that's one thing I hate about repotting on here is that sound. I do plan on getting a new dining table once my bank account financially recovers from the last two months. What the heck? One more sound and you're done. Jeez oh, Louise. Okay. So first AITA. Um, I'm going to read you the story and I am going to discuss and then I will tell you whether Reddit or not voted them as the a-hole or not. Am I the a-hole for demanding a new plant from my mom after she broke it while vacuuming? So I, 20 female, live with my mom, 52 female. I love caring for plants and collecting special variations. One of my favorite philodendrons is finally forming a new leaf after it had been accidentally broken by me. I have bought this philodendron as a baby plant and have fostered it for over two and a half years into an adult plant. I just watered my plants before leaving to get my nails done this morning. I didn't see any damaged plants and I'm 100% sure I have watered above mentioned plant. My mom and I have an agreement that I vacuum my own room as I don't want her to accidentally break or damage my plants. This has happened before and I must say it's pretty risky as my room is a literal jungle, hence why I want to vacuum it. If anything breaks, it's my fault. When I come back from my nails, the top with a new leaf of the plant was missing and stuff had been placed on my bed, which is a sign that my mom had been vacuuming. I asked my mom what happened, half panicking. She said nothing happened, so I asked her if she's seen a chunk of the plant on the floor. Again, no. But half my plant just can't go missing. I've looked in the trash can, inside and outside, but I can't find it. My mom denies anything happened. I'm honestly more than sure she broke it while vacuuming, but I have to admit I don't know what happened in the two hours I was away. Maybe someone came over and she showed them my room as it's quite the attraction. My mom and I live together, but we live pretty separate day-to-day -day lives. Hello. 
I feel like I'm feeling better, but there's, yeah, it, there's still some pain and, you know, weird taste in my mouth, but um, I'm not like in excruciating pain like I was before. My dentist is seriously like so cool. He knows I have anxiety and stuff and he's just been like checking in on me every few days about my mouth. Anyway, um, sorry. My mom and I live together, but we live pretty separate day-to-day -day lives. I have told my mom I don't care if she doesn't want to apologize, but I'd like for her to buy me a new baby plant, which is just $3.50. So I don't have any concrete evidence to prove that my mom broke the plant, but there was nobody else in the house and she vacuumed my room. Could my memory be betraying me and am I the a-hole for demanding a new plant from my mom if she really hasn't broken anything? Or am I right to assume she broke the plant and at least deserves some sort of apology? I feel like people are definitely gonna have mixed opinions on this. I guess my opinion, like I guess my gut instinct just by reading this off the bat is she's being a very, very big baby. Like, I don't know, it's, I think it's because it's like the nature of plants, right? Like if you break the top off, it's not like she just said she has a, a mature adult plant. If you break the top off, it, sure, it goes missing. Nobody wants the top of their beloved plant to go missing, but why do you need a replacement plant and a baby plant at that if you still have the rest of the plant? It almost feels really petty to me to like demand a new plant from your mom because she broke the top off of your plant. It's like, it's just weird, right? Like if someone broke the top off of one of my philodendrons, I would, the first thing I would do is not be like, you need to buy me another one. I don't need another one. I still have the plant, you know, new growth is gonna come from it unless this person doesn't know that. But either way, I, I find it really weird to demand a new plant from your mom. Now, I could be, I could have this opinion because I have such a great relationship with my mom and I would never in a million years demand a new plant from her just because she broke my plant. Not that I wouldn't be upset about it, you know, like if she broke a plant, especially if I asked her to like not go in a certain room, or like I specifically asked her to not do something. Sure, I would probably be annoyed, but I would just not, I would not go to those lengths to be like, well, now you need to like make things right and replace it, you know? I need to wash these roots, they're so gritty. For the sake of seeing a situation from both sides though, um, I don't think that the mom is completely not at fault, number one. Um, I get if you're trying to like do something nice by vacuuming her room, but like no one's gonna fault you for that. But if she has specifically asked you to not vacuum her room and you do it anyway, I kind of feel like at that point, it's sort of like an invasion of privacy and like boundaries. You know, like even if you're trying to do something nice and you have the best intentions, like, she so specifically asked you to not vacuum her room for that reason. Like she didn't want, she wanted to avoid the situation altogether. I also think it's crappy because we know that the top of a plant is not just gonna magically go missing, right? It, she did say maybe she forgot that she broke the plant and then it went missing, but I highly doubt for a plant that like is so beloved to her and like she obviously cares about this plant a lot. I feel like someone would remember if they broke the top off of this plant. My opinion of just reading the story, I do feel like the mom was in there. She probably broke it off. She knew that she made a mistake and she tried to cover it up. So I think that's shitty too is like just be honest with her. You know, you already did it. You might as well just like fess up. I don't know. I feel like both parties did things that are really shitty, but at the same time, I kind of feel like it's a reflection of their relationship almost because I just could never see this situation happening with my own mom. Obviously, I'm very lucky to have such a great relationship with my mom where, you know, we have boundaries and, and things like that. But if we did find ourselves 
in this same situation for whatever reason i personally just would not ask my mom to replace my plant because it's the whole plant is not gone if the mom broke the entire plant and it was like beyond um repair like beyond saving then at that point i think it would be fair to like ask her mom to replace the plant and you know it's nice that she's not asking her to replace it with one that's like of equal value or of like the same maturity level and she's willing to just have like a smaller plant then i would say that like that's more reasonable to demand a new plant from your mom but in this specific case i kind of feel like yeah she's being sort of a baby about it i don't know that's just my opinion um maybe if i didn't have such a great relationship with my mom i might feel different about it but as it stands i i'm voting that both of them were the a-holes in this situation but more so the daughter just my opinion and then in terms of what reddit thought um, about this person they voted her not the a-hole but anywho i'm going to be getting it into this little vessel right here which looks like it was an old tupperware if i had to guess i got this at a thrift store but it kind of looks like one of those um gla like glass tupperware that has like a plastic lid but anyway um i'm gonna put this into pawn i'm not gonna jump into another aita just yet because vint is about to be on his call as i'm thinking about this i would just love to know your opinions on all of these stories so i'm gonna call that first story obviously story number one and hopefully in the comments you guys can be like story one story two story three story four um and write if you think they were the a-hole or not i just I just want to see what what everyone's thoughts are so um just to see if you guys agree with me or you don't agree with me which is totally fine these are all very subjective and yeah anyway let's get this guy in here i need pawn so badly by the way i should mention this um in my last video i have never had so many comments trying to like scream at me the same thing basic pawn so i talked about no drainage in my last video and i was saying how i wish that lechuza pawn didn't make their pawn with um slow release fertilizer so that you know it didn't activate when you boil it to clean it and i had no idea that um lechuza pawn made pawn without without the slow release and it's called basic uh basic lechuza pawn or lechuza pawn basic or something I did not know that, so thank you guys for um, putting me on. To be honest, I don't really peruse the Lechuza Pond website very often because all the times that I have gotten a bag of Lechuza Pond, it was always through like a group order, so someone else was always handling the order for me, so I have no clue like what they sell and, and things like that. And they're always sold out, so I rarely ever check the website to see if they even have any pawn because I already know that they're not going to have pawn. I did try and go to a store today to pick up all of the amendments to make my own pawn, and of course they did not have anything. So I'm going to have to go to another one, but um, essentially that is where we are now. I need to just make my own massive batch of pawn because this is all this is all i have left and now this once i sterilize it so we're not doing great but luckily most of the things that are going to be repotted today are going to go in soil i'm so glad this is repotted that bothered me so much it dried out so fast in this vessel where'd it go in this one it dried out so 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 fast um, and I had it in this one obviously and I would just like fill it with water But it would just evaporate so quickly because it's so hot in my Hoya cabinet But you guys I repotted it without breaking anything. Um, I'm a little shook Two of those growth points What did I just say two of those growth points are still intact and we're looking good so um Anywho gonna take a little break because Vince is about to get on a call and then we're gonna jump right into story number two I've got about an hour before Vince's next meeting, so let's try and make this quick, quick, quick. Um, I need another bowl. Story number two. 
Am I the a-hole for not taking care of my sister's plants? I, 34 female, and sister, 38 female, both live in the same town. We've never been close throughout our childhood, and in the past, she has warned me not to depend on her for anything. Jeez. <laughs> Recently, she started showing up at my gym, so I decided to try and start talking to her again. She started telling me about her life over the past few weeks, um, and said she's going on vacation with her fiance. She asked if, since we're family, I would take care of her plants. I told her that I likely wouldn't be able to as I have a job and a cat that I already look after. She sort of laughed it off and told me that when I'm over, I would need to clean up a bit too. I rolled my eyes at her and went home. She left a week ago and came back yesterday and has been blasting my phone with messages saying her house is trashed and all of her plants are dead. I never went in her house, but I feel as though I should have checked just once to make sure her locks were working and to care for her plants since she's my sister. On top of that, I don't really know what happened to her house, but she lives in a bad neighborhood, so it might have been a break-in of some kind. I feel bad for her, but I don't think it's completely my fault for what happened. Our mom is on my side, but my dad seems conflicted as he believes family must do everything for each other. Let me stop you right there and say that you don't Oh, jack crap to anyone, even if they're family. I feel so passionately about this. Um, there are absolutely no roots. What is this plant doing? Guys, it's been in this vessel for so long. Not even, not even a glimmer of a, of a root. Well, that surely was unexpected. I mean, I expected something. Anyway, you don't, I, I really think that um, it's such toxic mentality to assume that just because someone is family that they're entitled to your time, they're entitled to your love, they're entitled to your respect, um, they're entitled to anything. The only thing that you guys share is blood and genetics. That does not give you any kind of special privilege um, to someone. Or that doesn't give you any kind of special privilege, honestly. And I think this is a hard thing that people grapple with, whether if you're on the receiving end or not. It's like you sort of naturally feel like you have to take care of your family members, you have to forgive them, you have to, you know, try and meet them halfway. But the truth is like toxic people are toxic people or people who don't put an effort into your life or contribute nothing to your life. You don't owe them anything. I firmly, firmly believe that I have no problem cutting off family members who don't serve me in a way that is beneficial to my life. Not that all family members need to be doing something beneficial to my life, but meaning like if you're a toxic person, I don't like the vibes that I get from you, then that we don't need to be in each other's lives. And that's, and that's how I feel and how I will always feel. So in this situation, um, it sounds like the two are basically like kind of estranged, but I feel like the sister who went away on vacation with her fiance. I feel like this whole, you know, reconnecting with your sister thing or whatever was very like selfish and self-serving because she needed something and it wasn't because she would ever re like repay the favor or return the favor and it's not because she like felt like she could I don't know, trust her more than anyone else. I feel like it was convenient for her, so she jumped at the opportunity to have her sister um, take care of her plants. I don't know the details of their relationship, but the whole thing kind of sounds weird to me. It's like you have this sister who you don't even like, you're not close with, you don't talk and stuff, but then all of a sudden, like, she wants you to take care of her house and like, take care of her plants it's weird to me it's super weird to me like usually if two sisters are reconnecting or two family members are connecting i feel like you should start with like coffee first or like lunch or something a dinner not just straight up like hey i saw you at the gym i'm going away can you like take care of my apartment that's weird that's super weird 
Now I will say though that I think that the sister, the other sister, should have at least communicated with her other sister to tell her I'm not coming over. I mean, it kind of sounds like she told her she was going to be busy, but maybe didn't explicitly say I am not going to be coming to your house. I did think it was strange though that she mentioned like, oh, I guess I should have told her that like, or I guess I should have checked if the locks were working. <laughs> it's such a weird, that's such a weird thing to to ask of someone or that's a weird thing to expect from someone like if i was going away for a long period of time i would never like ask alice to come here and be like hey can you make sure my lock is working <laughs> like i just assume that my locks are working you know what i mean like it's so strange to assume that maybe it wasn't unless it's like something that they've had an issue with in the past then i guess but even then it's like really weird i think this situation was massive miscommunication or just like the lack of communication altogether. I feel like she should have been maybe more explicit in what she was. Oh, there's a lot of mold in here. Let me show you guys. I don't know what kind of mold this is, but it's harmless and it happens when your substrate is too wet and you're not getting enough airflow. And yes, this has drainage holes, but I did have a reserve down at the bottom, so yeah, didn't like that. So I'm not gonna empty it into here. But anyway, uh, yeah, I think it was massive miscommunication or lack thereof. And I just feel like they, they shouldn't have like even attempted this in the first place. Like, or I feel like, I feel like the sister shouldn't have expected anything from her sister at all. Shouldn't have asked her to do anything for her given that they don't have a relationship let alone to like apartment sit and like, you know, watch your plants and stuff. Especially if she at least communicated that she was busy. You know, it says that she was busy with work and her cat or whatever. Yeah, I think all of this could have been avoided. I don't think that she was the a-hole in this situation. So I don't think that the person who posted this um, was the a-hole in this situation, but I do think that she severely severely lacked in um, communication, um, which kind of put her in a weird position. So she's not completely not at fault, but definitely not an a-hole. I think she just should have been more explicit with her sister. But also if her sister was expecting that like, her sister was gonna like stay at her apartment and make sure that like nothing bad happened to the apartment the entire time she was gone, that would have been, I don't know, kind of a lot to ask of a sister that you don't really have a relationship with. It's especially if like, you know, it's not in a great neighborhood. So, kind of sounds like the sister needs more friends. Roots are not great on this one, um, as I kind of expected that they wouldn't be. I'm sort of tempted to get this into perlite or tree fern, like back into tree fern fiber with added perlite, I don't know. It hasn't been terrible in tree fern fiber, it's just this situation was not ideal. I feel so small, well I am small, but I feel so small with this setup and the camera being so low. Anyway, I'm gonna mix some of this perlite from the Queen of Hearts into here so that it's a little chunkier. Hopefully we've got some better luck this time around with this new vessel if it's big enough my jaw is starting to hurt Ugh, from talking i don't know if i'm going to be able to get through this you guys and i'm supposed to be filming for the next three days because guess who's going to california next month me and i need to catch up on filming or like get really really ahead with filming so that i have enough to go up while I'm away. And um, I also need to be spending more time with um, planning my niece and nephew's birthday party. I have done nothing and their party is in July. So it is gonna be a busy, busy month. And getting this wisdom tooth out happened at the worst time, but honestly, I think there was never going to be like an optimal time to get that tooth out. And it has been bothering me for a really long time. 
don't know if I mentioned, but it was growing, it was growing this way, like at a 90 degree angle and it was like pushing into my back tooth. And so I couldn't like 100% clean it back there. And my dentist was worried that I was gonna get a pretty gnarly cavity on that back tooth. And if it, you know, got really bad, then it could end up in a root canal and we do not want that, so. There is a part of me that is relieved that the tooth is finally gone, but a part of me has been prolonging this whole thing because I knew that I was gonna get some kind of like reaction from it since it was a more invasive surgery than my other three teeth. I'm trying to maintain some sense of order around here because if not, it's gonna get wild. Okay, so we, have my mellow soil or pond i tried pond before it did not like it but maybe that's because i had bad juju and i repotted it during the mercury retrograde my heart is saying pond because i don't grow alocasia in soil i just don't i don't i don't i don't we're in a new pond okay I'm gonna say this on camera. If this rots in pond again, the next time it's gonna go in soil, okay? Next time, not this time, next time. Okay, let's do another. Oh, um, by the way, that last one, uh, story number two, Reddit voted her not the a hole. Story number three Am I the a hole for taking back a plant somebody else saved? I bought a house plant, some type of pothos, from Home Depot. After about a month of it being in our home, I started noticing little fly-like bugs living in it. I grew up in the woods, so bugs don't really bother me, but my husband immediately made me throw it out. Instead of throwing it out, I put it down in the laundry room so at least other people could enjoy it. Over the past year or so, it looks like someone has been watering it regularly and it is thriving. I decided to take the plant back upstairs into my apartment because the bugs are gone and it is, after all, my plant. Am I the a-hole for taking it back? Well, you're... <laughs> you're not... Okay. You're not an a-hole for taking it back. You're not an a-hole for taking it back. Pudge thinks she's an a-hole. The cleaning lady is vacuuming. So um, you're not, I don't think that she's an a-hole particularly because she took the plant back. I think the a-hole move was putting a fungus gnat ridden plant in a public space in the first place. I just feel, <laughs> I feel like there's like a certain like unspoken sort of etiquette that us plant parents should follow. Um, when we are rehoming plants and to me, it's like to do your due diligence one of those rules is to do your due diligence in Trying your best to not pass off a pest infested plant. Nobody Really can guarantee like that a plant is a hundred percent pest free but if you're at least trying to make the effort to like give it as clean as possible I, I think that's great but if you're knowingly putting a plant that is ridden with um, fungus gnats into a public space, that's not cool. <laughs> if you are intentionally though, passing off this plant that you no longer can keep because of the pest issue and you put it into a public space, I feel like that is just such a crappy thing to do. This person says they wanted other people to enjoy it, but I feel like that is you just assuming that the people that will be enjoying it in this common area or this shared laundry space, like first off even like likes plants, but like, I don't know. I feel like the last thing that I need when I'm doing a chore that I already hate doing is having fungus gnats fly around me as I'm doing it. I feel like the bottom line here is that you shouldn't have put a plant that was um, infested with fungus gnats in a public space to begin with. I think it's one thing to rehome it um, to someone else 
disclosing what the issue is and then they can make that decision whether they want to rehab it and take it in or not but it's another thing to put it in a public space and sort of make it other people's problem um, because you for whatever reason just didn't want to throw it away I mean she says that she put it in the laundry room for other people to enjoy but that's making like a very like large assumption that people are going to be enjoying this plant some people probably don't even care about plants. I mean, there are people out there who don't give a flying F about plants, especially ones that have gnats flying at their faces while they're trying to do laundry. So I just, okay, I just feel like if a plant has pests, if you're not willing to throw it away, if you're one of those people who just truly cannot be bothered to, th not be bothered, but you don't have it in you to throw it away, because me, I am not one of those people. If a plant is bothering me for any reason, I'm at a place now where I'm like, the trash, that, that's where you live now. But there are people who are just like vehemently against throwing away plants. And if that's the case, and you are one of these kinds of people and you just, you couldn't get yourself to throw it away. So you thought the next best thing would be to put it in a, you know, a public space. I'm gonna stop you right there and say, <laughs> don't do it. Because it's a shared space, I feel like you have you have to take other people into consideration. And this is gonna kind of go off topic for a little bit, but it's sort of related. It reminds it reminds me if you guys are, you know, if you've been on this channel since I started, um, you'll know that I got into some drums, some drama with um, my neighbors in 2021 long story short i'll post that video in the comments so that you can get like the full story but long story short a bunch of these kids used spray paint chalk all over the picnic area of our park and this is um the only covered area of the park where like the the bench the concrete benches are people rent it out for parties and stuff I don't have an issue at all with kids playing with chalk at the park. It's always like tagged up with, you know, drawings and stuff. And I think it's really cute. I think it brings a lot of character to the park. But they use this kind of chalk spray paint that looks nothing like chalk. It looks like spray paint. And they tagged, they, I mean, they were drawing all over the floor. They drew on the benches. They drew on the little pillars. And it just looked crazy it was like it looked really i don't know it just did not look great and i posted in like our neighborhood group and was just like hey like i i don't know who like did this but um you know can we not do this in like public like common areas like keep the chalk at the playground and like oh my gosh all of the parents came for me they just like ganged up on me so bad they were coming to the kids defense saying like you know you're a karen and let the kids be kids let the kids have fun blah 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 and there was only one parent that actually agreed with me and uh she ended up reaching out to the city they confirmed with her that they do not want that kind of chalk used in that common area because it's rented out that's how that's how the city makes money um, from that picnic area. People use it for birthday parties and engagement parties and all different kinds of things. So the last thing that they want is like a picnic area that has like chalk all over it. But, you know, they thought that I was being a Karen because they're kids and it's it's just chalk. But I knew that it wasn't just chalk because I was trying to use my foot to like rub it off. You know, if you have chalk on the floor and you just use your foot to like, you know, rub it, it'll like come off. This stuff was not budging at all. The city actually had to come out and send someone to clean it and they used like a power washer and it still wouldn't come off. The residue was on there for months. I'm not kidding, months. And no, everyone just kind of doubled down. Nobody wanted to admit that, yeah, the chalk paint was not as harmless as they were trying to make it seem. But they, you know, had no problem like painting me as a Karen where I wasn't saying like the kids shouldn't have fun. I'm just saying, if they're gonna chalk, keep it at the playground. Like there's so many areas for the kids to use chalk in that in that area. Why did it have to be in like a public space that everybody uses, you know? And then the next thing is like, why can't they just use chalk? Like this spray paint chalk is terrible. It's basically just like using paint. And 
I don't know. I just thought it was inappropriate. I still stand by it. I don't think that that kind of chalk paint should be used um, at all because it just looks really bad. I don't see what the problem is with just using regular chalk. Anyway, that's how I feel about this whole like putting things in a public area that has to be shared with other people because there was actually somebody that rented out the um, park area, the bench area, the following weekend after all that chalk stuff went up and they were pissed. They were mad because they had like a whole, I think it was like a 16th birthday party. They had like a whole backdrop with like balloons and stuff. And then all you see tagged are like, is like writing and, and happy faces everywhere. And yeah, apparently they complained and they weren't happy that like the, the park area was not in like good condition when you know you have to pay I think it's like a hundred something dollars just to rent out that um, bench area but I digress all of that to say I feel like it goes along the same lines where like you just assume oh my kids are having so much fun my kids they like I love seeing my kids drawings and I love seeing my kids art and stuff and so yeah put it in a public space and you're just gonna assume that like everybody wants to see it I'm sorry, but like, I don't care that your kid can spell Ryan was here. Now I have to see that for like three months straight. It's the same thing. Don't assume that because you like something or something makes you happy or whatever, that everybody in the common area is going to enjoy it or receive it the way that, you know, you, you receive it or whatever. And yeah, I just, I put a lot of plants out. For my neighbors, I give a lot of plants away to friends and stuff, but I would never ever give a plant away um, knowing that it was infested with fungus gnats. To me, that's kind of mortifying. That's kind of embarrassing. I'm not usually embarrassed by pests, but I think that if you gave someone a plant that just had all these fungus gnats flying out of it, I don't know, I find that a little bit <laughs> embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie. So. That's how I feel about that. I feel like she's not an a-hole for taking it back because it is her plant. Nobody else wanted it. Nobody else took it home. I kind of feel bad for the person that had been taking care of it, but obviously they didn't want it enough to take it back to their place unless they just assumed that it was for the laundry room and was put there maybe by the building or something. But I don't think she's the a-hole for taking it back. Um, I just think that she's an a-hole for putting it there in the first place. Anyway, I need to chop this. Um, my friend Krista didn't text me back yet, but if she does not need another summer glory, then I'll just I'll just sell this this cutting. Um, I just hope that I can take a good enough cutting. Okay, we're gonna chop. I'm gonna do it. I said I wasn't gonna chop my plants anymore, but I will do it for a friend. Um, it's not like the best cutting, but it's truly the only place that I can cut it and at least she'll have several nodes to work with should anything happen to it. That's not bad at all. Look how cute it is. It's like the color of wine. I miss having wine. I'm not supposed to drink while I'm on all these meds and stuff, so... Anyway, here's her cutting. Um, you can see it's got a good amount of stem. It's about three inches long. One, two, three, four nodes and one leaf. It's not the best leaf. I would have liked to give her maybe something like this, but um, this is unfortunately the best I can do at the moment. So I'm gonna get this into, whoa. I'll just put it in here since I'm trying to get rid of my plants, I mean, my pots with drainage holes. Um, also, going back to story number three, um, <laughs> Reddit did say this person was the a-hole for taking the plant back and the comments were saying that she was an a-hole for putting the plant there in the first place too. I'm gonna dip this guy in some callus. Oh, actually, this one is fine because I'm not gonna bury that but I am going to dip this into some callusing hormone. Sorry if you guys can hear my dog honking in the background. Okay, let me redo this next AITA. So this is story number four. Hopefully I'm getting the numbers correctly. I think this is number four. So am I the a-hole for complaining about my apartment neighbor's plant? 
I live at the end of a hallway in an apartment building and my neighbors are both in their 70s, 80s, and our doors are adjacent to each other. Well, oh, there's a little bug crawling. Um, they love plants and this morning I heard my neighbors arguing in the hallway and looked, the po and looked through the peephole to see them moving a plant as tall as a ceiling with branches, let's just call it a tree, down the hall. I figured they were going to add it to the balcony, but they ended up putting it on the left side of their door, which blocks about half the width of the hallway, and it only affects people going to my unit and theirs. I personally see this as a fire hazard at worst, as it forms an arc, as it forms an arch with the branches, um, but I can't walk down the hall while carrying anything without hitting it, and it'll definitely grow in height and width. I asked them if they could move it, and the wife got really defensive and started yelling at me in German. Um, which surprised me as they've been incredibly kind and communicative over the past three years. We've never even had a small issue with each other before now. I told her I can't walk past it while carrying things like my laundry basket and groceries without hitting it, never mind furniture, and she refused to move it and said that she was going to file a complaint against me to the management company that runs our building for, that runs our building for harassment. It might be a hole for asking her to move the plant out of the hallway. Well, she sounds like a lovely lady. I think, honestly, this goes back to what I was saying the first time about being mindful of common, common areas, even if it is like directly in front of your property or in front of your building. Like even if it is technically in your entrance, it's still in a common area. It's in the hallway. And um, I personally like would love to have a plant out in the hallway. I mean, we're not allowed to, but if we were allowed to, I probably would put a plant out there, um, but I would never put one that would get in the way of our neighbors adjacent to us, um, that like it would obstruct them from getting in and out of their apartment. And as someone who has been living in an apartment over the last several years, we kind of have to do things differently. You know, I'm lucky that in my unit I have a washer and dryer and I don't have to like use a common laundromat or whatever to, to do my laundry. But we do have to use things like carts pretty frequently when we're taking out garbage, taking out recycling, um, doing groceries, or you know, if we go shopping at all, like if it's a lot of stuff, it's not like we can just like bring it into our house through our front door you know it's we have to go through parkade we have to go through the elevator we have to go through the hallway and so not being able to like free, freely move around the carts through the hallways would be kind of annoying because it's already sort of an inconvenience to live in an apartment as it is but to have to like navigate around people's stuff is another thing when I first moved into this building, a lot of people had, myself included, we had doormats and people had all different types of doormats, all different shapes and sizes and stuff. And one day um, we got a notice from the building basically saying that everyone had to get rid of their doormats in the hallway. They were just not allowing doormats anymore. And I was kind of annoyed because I did like having a doormat there to like, wipe our shoes off before we came into the house because now we're tracking in a lot more things you know from from outside but I also noticed that once all the doormats were gone it was so much easier to like haul our little um, cart through the hallway um, because we weren't having to like swivel around um, to squeeze through like all the different doormats so I I understand you know how much of a I guess luxury it is to have like a wide hallway with nothing obstructing you but if my neighbor next to me always had something near my door that was like preventing me from bringing things in and out um, freely I would definitely definitely be annoyed here's the pot that I have I was going to make this into a succulent garden for my balcony but I'm kind of rethinking the succulent garden idea because I don't want to have to bring it in over the winter. So I think I am going to just pot this guy in here and I'm going to treat it still like it's crawling. 
and we'll see if it just kind of continues that way or if it starts to climb but either way i think that this vessel is what i want to go with now i know that it seems very very large in comparison to the um size of the roots but also keep in mind that this is very shallow my mom had her or has her gloriosum her big gloriosum potted in a pot just like this and it's doing really well so i don't have very many um things potted and things like this um, i used to but not at the present moment but i have done it before and it's been fine so that's what i'm gonna go with so okay um i think that the neighbor was the a-hole in this situation and not the person who posted treat common areas like common areas they're not for you specifically they're for everyone so none of your belongings should be in a common area that would be um an inconvenience to someone else so yeah especially if you're putting like a whole tree out there it's one thing if you're gonna put like a little tiny plant in front of your door but like a whole tree like that's kind of much and um reddit voted that she is not the a-hole story number something throw it up here because i forgot already story number four i don't remember am i the a-hole for not feeling remorseful and responsible for my girlfriend's favorite plant that died me 27 male and my girlfriend 26 female who i've been living with for eight months feels that i'm partly responsible for her dead plant she went away for three weeks and then i joined and we traveled for two weeks when we came back she found out that her favorite plant died and was very upset about it when I went to comfort her, she expressed frustration and anger toward me for her plant dying. I responded with frustration that she didn't give me any instructions to water her plant or look after it when she left. She felt that I should have paid attention to it and noticed that the plant was dying. We spoke about it the following night when our emotions had cooled and she apologized for putting the blame on me but still felt that I was partly responsible for the plant dying and was frustrated that I didn't feel any remorse. I had very minimal awareness of the plant's existence and she didn't once tell me to take care of it so I'm finding it difficult to see it from her point of view. Am I the a-hole for not feeling remorseful and responsibility for the death of her favorite plant? I like this one. I like this one because it's very relatable. I feel like um, after living with my, well, I lived with one boy before Vince, I lived with my ex-boyfriend um, who I dated before Vince. We lived together for about a year. And then now I've been living with Vince since 2017. So um, I can say that just in the, I've been dating boys slash men since, I don't know, I was 13. So I have a good amount of years under my belt in the dating pool with um, heterosexual men. <laughs> And um, I can say that with like absolute certainty, and this is, again, please don't take this offensively, not all men, okay? Not all men. But a good majority of men do not take the, not the initiative, that's not what I'm trying to say. They don't see the things that we see. Um, they don't see the things that we see, okay? I had trouble uh, grappling with this for a good period of time when I um, really got things settled with, with Vince, um, like together as partners, roommates, husband, wife, whatever. I wanna word this very carefully. Be careful, Sherman, tread lightly. <laughs> um, more so than not, I feel like in most household, in most households, there's one person that sort of steers the ship not we're not talking about finances none of that we're talking about you know there's an ecosystem to everyone's home everyone has their way of doing things of keeping order there's schedules that need to be followed sometimes to make sure that everything flows smoothly and usually i feel even if it's a you know i believe that partnerships i mean that relationships are partnerships everyone should be compromising and meeting in the middle and being equal and stuff but i will say especially in this household there is definitely a captain and i'm the captain <laughs> i'm the captain of this house because 
I know where everything is. I decorate the whole place. I'm the one that really is always sort of neurotically cleaning. I am the one that makes like the grocery lists and lists for things we need like batteries and soap and all the things that, you know, keeps the household moving. I think you guys get what I'm saying. I, I feel like you know what I'm talking about. Ooh. Um, geez, it hurts. The captain of the ship tends to see things that need to be done more so than the other person. And sometimes that second person in the household doesn't, they, they just, it's like they have goggles on, like they don't see the dust, they don't see the dead plants, they don't see the fur that's, you know, on top of the media cabinet, stuff like that. And it can get frustrating. I'm speaking from firsthand experience. Love you, Vince, but you know, he he's well aware we've had our we've had our issues. Worked through them, working through them. It's a work in progress. It's it's we're always we're always we're always learning here. The <laughs> um, okay, uh God, I need to write down my thought. Say I'm the captain. I just called you captain because you're the captain. <laughs> I'm the captain. Okay, I need but to. I'm the owner. <laughs> you're okay, that's a sports analogy. That's a sports analogy. Okay, so um, as I was saying, all of that captain talk <laughs> was just to say that sometimes our partners don't see the things around the house that seem obvious to us. And I can say from personal experience, this has definitely been a point of tension in our relationship when we first um, started living together. And I think this is something that I definitely want to speak more of in depth um, on my vlog channel because, you know, we are very open about it and um, it's not something that we feel like should be a secret um, or not perfect and I don't expect perfection out of this relationship but that is definitely something that I struggled with um, when I first started living with him just because I was so used to either living on my own or living with my family and like we didn't really have well we did have these issues but you know it's it's different when it's your when it's your partner so um in this scenario specifically i'm not surprised at all that her boyfriend didn't even think twice about the plants or about the plant and from personal experience i would never go away on a trip and just expect that vince is gonna do everything in the house that I normally would do before I leave for a trip. Um, I would never really even expect that of him. I would be super explicit. If there was something super specific, like a plant that needed to get um, watered before he left, I would literally like put it as like a Google Calendar reminder, make sure that it gets done. It's not something that I would just like assume is gonna get done especially if it's not a chore that he does regularly. So I, I feel like this was um, mostly the girlfriend's fault for assuming that her boyfriend was gonna take care of it and not being very specific about her expectations while um, she was away for her leg of the trip before they met up. Um, but I mean, I'm not going to say that like he should be remorseful because it's like how can you be remorseful about something that you didn't even know was a responsibility of yours. I don't think that it's fair that she should expect him to feel guilty or feel any kind of like responsibility for it um, since it's her plant and she didn't even tell him to water it. But I, I, I feel like at some point, you know, you know she's upset, you know your partner's upset. I would say like, just validate her feelings and be like, I understand why you're upset. I hope that you understand where I'm coming from and it's not that I don't care 
about you and the plant that you care about but like you weren't specific it kind of sounded like she was upset because he's just kind of brushing it off like oh well it's not my fault that's your fault you know i think what she's looking for is just a little bit of i don't know sympathy or empathy which one is it sympathy empathy she's just looking for a little bit of like something from him and she's not getting it which is why i think she's upset i want to believe that there's a part of her at least a small part of her that feels like it's her fault too or sees where she um contributed to this situation even happening at all i would hope that she's not like a hundred percent adamant that like this is her boyfriend's fault and could have a hundred percent been avoided if he had just done so so x x and x um gosh this looks crazy but she's i mean it's crawling Hopefully it figures itself out because it's kind of funny right now. But um, I do think she's going to like life in here. We just got to figure out where these leaves are going. For my Dicaria matagariensis, I'm using more of a cactus-y mix. It's like really, really gritty, really sandy. Lots of pumice, lots of pond in here. And um, yeah, it's just a little bit different than my typical aeroid mix. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Okay, I'm going to unpot this i'm gonna soak it and then we're gonna move on to the next one and we'll just we'll come back to this at the very end i think um so anyway i i think in this scenario he, um the boyfriend is not the a-hole i think the girlfriend could have communicated it very explicitly and not assume that he was gonna take care of it especially since it's not something that he does regularly anyway it would be different if that was like his chore and like, you know, watering that plant was like one thing that he does all the time and then he didn't do it. That would be a, a little different, but that's not the case in this situation. This is a really tiny root system. I can see some broken roots here, but I don't know if these are like old roots and there's really not a ton of them. But anyway, I'm going to get this soaked because webs everywhere. I forgot what I was saying, but I'm gonna wrap that story up and say, yeah. Reddit said this person was not an a-hole. Okay, this one's kind of long. Oh my gosh, rest in peace, my jaw. Okay, am I the a-hole for getting my coworker fired over a plant? I know how the title sounds, but hear me out. I, 23 female, work at a healthcare agency. When I first started, they had me sharing an office with another worker who had been there for a few years. I should also mention this is my first job out of college. My coworker primarily worked in the community and only used the office once a week. I noticed when I first came in that she had a little plant on the table next to her desk. We made introductions and things were going well. Then she mentioned that she keeps the blinds in the office closed because her plant burns in sunlight. I didn't think much of it at the time. I kind of thought she was joking. Anyway, as the weeks go on, I was using the office by myself four days a week. I would open the blinds as I have anxiety and having natural sunlight and a view to outside helps me. Remembering what she had said about her plant, I usually moved it out of the sunlight during the day then put it back and closed the blinds when I left. One day she came in and saw this arrangement and became upset saying, my, can't, my plant can't be there. I apologized as I probably should have been, I shouldn't have been moving it and asked her where her plant should go since I needed the blinds open. She said the lights in the office should be enough and I needed to keep the blinds closed. Explaining how it helped with my mental health, she rolled her eyes and I said I could crack them a little. When I got back from lunch, there was a note on my desk that said, keep the blinds closed, thanks. And she walked in, cracked the blinds and said, this is as good as it's gonna get. I hate confrontation, so I didn't say anything else. After talking with my friends and family, I went to my boss who said she would handle the situation. A few more weeks went by and I would just open the blinds and not touch the plant. One day she came in and forcefully shut the blinds. She said, I thought we agreed you wouldn't open the blinds. I told her that our boss never told me that after I talked with her. My coworker told me that the plant was special and had been passed down by a lost friend. I, I said I was sorry about that, but I needed the blinds open for my mental health and asked if she could bring the plant home instead. She said, no, I don't have any room at home. Mind you, this plant is small. The conversation ended with us deciding to talk to our boss. 
A few, a few days later, I have the blinds open again and I had moved her plant because my anxiety about the situation had gotten so bad. I was worried the plant would die while I had the blinds open. I'm on the phone with a client when she suddenly barges in and starts cussing me out saying I shouldn't touch other people's things and I was a <laughs> My boss walked in at the moment and I escaped to go cry in my friend's office. After being suspended and making more comments at me when she came back, an investigation into the situation let, led to her being fired. I know I probably escalated the situation by moving her plant, but should I have handled this differently? So am I the a-hole. She's lucky I was not her coworker. The way that that plant would have been so far away from the window and the blinds completely open, I would have ripped the blinds down tell you that much i don't know jack crap about this plant i've never owned it it does look very sensitive to sunlight but at the same time kind of looks like a terrarium plant that wouldn't mind being like under a grow light i don't know i don't know anything about it i don't know anything about this plant i don't know anything about the care of it i wouldn't doubt if she says that it gets scorched in direct sunlight but if that's the case then move the freaking plant it's a sh again it's a shared space you have co-workers that have every right to open the blinds if they want some freaking sunlight i mean i would not want to work in a dark office either especially if i had access to a window i'm 100 percent gonna open it and you know i get people care about their office plants and whatever but like at that point where she's saying like don't even move the plant like to the other side of the desk or whatever while the blinds are open so that it doesn't get scorched. That's you just being petty and wanting things your way. I can't imagine anybody siding with the coworker um, in this case. And if you do, if you do side with this coworker, I wanna know why. Give me any reason why I should feel any kind of anything for, for Karen. Cause that's what she's acting like. She's acting like a Karen. I would have, I probably would have told her off, honestly. I would have been like, screw your plant. I'm the one that is working in this office, especially if she's, if she's not even in the office most of the week, if she's only there once a week. It's like, who's even enjoying the plant at this point? Like seriously, you can't bring that tiny little plant home. I don't buy it. I really freaking don't. I bet you it's a, one of those things where she's like, she can't have, she can't have the plant at home because maybe she has like a cat that would get into it or something. But that reeks to me of someone who is just trying to like prove a point at any cost, and someone who probably has like anger issues. I don't know because like you do not act like that at work, and the um you know the way she worded it. Like, oh, I got my coworker fired. No, you didn't. She got herself fired. Like, if you get that pressed over a freaking plant, you have you have some larger issues. And if the plant was so, so she says it was so important to her, she should have taken it home. Why is the, if a plant is that special to you, shouldn't it be in your home? not in your office i just don't understand i know this is ridiculous to put this large ass pole in this tiny ass little vessel but we're gonna make we're gonna make do <laughs> we're gonna make do with what the universe has given us it's completely selfish to like ask that of a coworker. honestly it's such a it's such a small thing to ask. She just wants she just wants to have some sunlight while she's working. Mental health issues or not, it doesn't matter. You don't need to have mental health issues to want to have a window open. It's a freaking window, for goodness sakes. She shouldn't have even needed her permission in the first place. I mean, I think this girl prefaced it by saying, you know, this is her first job out of college and stuff, and she maybe she's just not sure, like what etiquette is like or whatever in the office and she just doesn't have experience. But I can tell you that is not normal behavior whatsoever. And if that were me, I would not have been as patient with her. I think I would have probably chucked that plant across the room. No, I wouldn't have. Obviously it's not the plant's fault, but 
yeah, she the coworker was definitely the a hole in this situation, not the not the poster. And um, Reddit also agreed that she was not the a hole in this situation. That was an easy one. That one kind of made my blood boil a little bit. I'm gonna fill this pole with a little bit of soil down at the bottom. And then I think I'm gonna do tree fern fiber in the pole. I think this is the last one I'm gonna do because I only have one more plant to do after this. And my mouth hurts. Okay, so um, I, 28 male, live with my girlfriend, 27 female. She has a lot of plants. She isn't like super big into plants or gardening, but there are probably between five or 10 in every room. I would say she's super big into plants if she has five or 10 in every room. The reason I didn't think she cares so much about them is because she often brings plants home that die very fast and she just tosses them in the trash and says, if they can live on my schedule, they stay. And if they die, then oh well, whatever. She went on a trip for two weeks to stay with her family and asked me to water them. And I had no problem with that. I was busy while she was gone. I work full time and I also have to cook every day and take the dog out for walks every day. So I just forgot to water them, but it was an honest mistake. I didn't do it on purpose. And we called and texted a lot while she was gone and she didn't say anything about her plants even once. When she came back on the first day, she asked if I watered them and was already sounding annoyed and I told her I forgot. She says she thinks her favorite plant looks like it's wilting and she's super hyper fixated on it. None of them are dead, if that makes a difference. They just got droopy and a few are turning yellow, but not entirely. She told me she's actually mad at me for not doing it and I told her she didn't remind me of when or how much to water and then told me I was being an a-hole and she's disgusted with me, which is really harsh for something so small. So she thinks I'm an a-hole and I think she just wants to be mad. She told me to ask my friends about it, but I'm not going to bring up plant drama with them, haha, but I will ask Reddit on an anonymous account. Am I the a-hole? Yes, you are the a-hole. <laughs> You're the biggest a-hole, actually. It's it's giving me, I'm, I have the ick. I have the ick automatically just by reading this. I can already tell you, if this was my boyfriend, that would be like the biggest red flag ever. The reddest flag you've ever seen in your life. Ew, it's giving man child, honestly. Like, oh, you didn't, remi you didn't remind me, you didn't tell me. Oh, I didn't realize that um, me asking you once was not enough. I didn't realize that you agreeing to it was not enough. I, 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 sorry, I forgot to remind you. Forgot to remind you, the poor baby. Oh, you forgot it. You just forgot it, it's okay, baby. And the fact that he's using like, oh, I have, I have to cook for myself. I was so busy, I had to cook for myself. God forbid you have to cook for yourself, right? And walk the do and walk the dog. Oh, woe is you. Your life is so, so, so hard. Okay, I need to make a strap for this bad boy. Oh, I have the ick from him. How could she even, sorry. I know it's kind of dramatic to be like, how could she even want to stay with him after that? But like, seriously, if that's not like the biggest red flag, I don't know what is. Like, you would never use that excuse on like a cat or something. Like, hey, you agreed to feed my cat while I was gone. Oh, but you didn't do it because you had to feed yourself. I just think um, if you're an adult and you agree to do something, you should just do it. I don't know. Is that just a crazy, crazy idea? that if you agree to do something, like you explicitly tell someone you're gonna do something, maybe you should do it. I don't know. Just spitting out thoughts here. You knew that while she was gone that you were gonna have work, you were gonna have to walk the dog, you were gonna have to eat, and you agreed to it. Like, if you thought that you were gonna truly be too busy because feeding yourself is that's a lot that's a big big task huge task if you really thought that was going to be too much you should have just said so why did you even agree to water her plants in the first place if you were going to be too busy to do it then just don't do it and don't try and throw it back at her that she didn't remind you why the hell does she have to remind you to do something that you agreed to does your work have to remind you to come in to work? No. 
They give you a schedule, you agree to it, and then you just come in. That just truly, truly screams man baby to me and I'm thoroughly, thoroughly icked out by it. I can't, I can't. I would have freaking invoiced him for my dead plants and then broken up with him and then thrown all his, his shit out. There's like no tree fern fiber in here, but there is a fungus snack. All right, I have made a tree fern fiber moss mix. Ow. Yeah, I, I just could not emphasize enough how much of an a-hole man baby this dude is. And I promise you, if this was my situation, he would not be my boyfriend after that trip. Go in. Damn, that's packed way too tight, she said. So anyway, um, here is the finished situation. I may do a little bit of saran wrap on this top part where it's too small to fit any kind of strap. But I am going to put this in my XO for a while um, just so that I can keep this hydrated and um, get this plant rooted in here. Maybe I'll do some Velcro actually. I'm going to actually cut it into thirds, three pieces, because I need it to be really, really tiny because there's not a ton of like space on this stem to stick a velcro tie but i want to make sure that this top node has contact with the pole so that it knows it's there and it gets those little nodes rooted into it and we can speed up this process i don't know what the hell is gonna come of this this might be another burly marks fantasy situation where i completely just I don't know. I'm just not good at growing that plant and I kind of feel like this is going to be another one, but we have to give it a solid effort before we write anything off. Oh my gosh, my mouth. All right, so we're going to double back to the metagoriensis. I don't have any more LECA. I don't have LECA, but I do have rocks. <laughs> I said I'd never use rocks as um, a reserve level but I don't at the same time want to fill all of this with soil. I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't, I can't believe I'm doing this, especially with the plant that I love so much. But hear me out. It is in a windowsill, getting plenty of light. I am very controlled with my watering. It's gonna be in a really, really well-draining, aerated mix. Try this at home, kids. I'm just kidding. It's been done, okay? It's not the end of the world. Is it ideal? No. Because this does not have the same um, wicking properties as Leka does. And I was saving these rocks for decorative reasons because look how cute they are. They're black and they're flat and so cute. And I paid $1.25 for it. Um... So we're gonna try this out. I actually have never used rocks as a reserve down at the bottom. I've never done it, but there's a first for everything. So, oh, I'm using this soil. So we're gonna give her a whirl. Put a little layer down here. I do have like the asteroid sized perlite, but because this is like so on display in my living room, I don't, I don't like the look of having like big white perlite down at the bottom. It just, it's gonna ruin the whole look of this plant. I am opting for this taller vessel just because of like, again, how much this plant is growing. I'm gonna try and lift it as much as possible out. It's very pokey. Um, just because some growth tried to come out of the bottom here, let me show you and it got squished up against the side of the pot and then it just dieted. So um, maybe we can get something happening over here, hopefully. And I will be re-inoculating all of these plants with great white um, 
if you're not aware, Great White is a water-soluble mycorrhizal inoculant. So um, I'm going to be just kind of watering them with myco water instead of sprinkling it on the roots as I've done previously in a lot of my other videos. Okay, so this is here. This is a very, very large, large vessel for the like root size um, of this plant. So what I'm going to do is just be super, super sparse with my watering um, i'm gonna make sure that you know it's evenly wet but i'm not i'm not gonna give this plant a ton of water every watering i'm gonna just make sure that i'm monitoring it um, like i mentioned it is gonna be um it's in a windowsill in the south facing windowsill so it's getting plenty of light i'm not worried about that water being used up but i'm gonna be super super careful and um, it's not the ideal plant that I would like to be experimenting on, but I am kind of intrigued to see how it goes. The last one that I was going to do was this Homolomina Humulus Red Velvet, but honestly, you guys, I am actually in a lot of pain right now, and my head is starting to hurt because I have this nerve pain radiating on my right side with my ear, my neck, and like my head on this side, so I'm not going to push it anymore or else I don't think this healing is going to um, go any faster. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna cut it here. I don't know if you guys enjoyed the um, Am I the A-Holes? Don't forget to let me know on each story um, what you thought your opinion was. If this is something that you want, to, want me to make into an ongoing series, let me know and we can do this pretty regularly when I do some repots and stuff. But anyway, please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, thank you so much for watching another video. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your patience as we navigate this situation. Um, hopefully I can still get videos up as scheduled, but things might have to change. But anyway, um, yeah, love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one.